Hi friends, I'm Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Each month we read all four books, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. We have finished Luke, John, and Mark, and today we start Matthew. Here's how this works. I will read three chapters to you, and you can listen or read along in your own Bible or online, and then I'll pray, and that is it. Today is April 20. 21st, day 21, and I'll be reading Matthew chapters 1 through 3. And this month, I'm reading from the message. Matthew 1, the family tree of Jesus Christ, David's son, Abraham's son. Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob had Judah and his brothers. Judah had Perez and Zerah, the mother was Tamar. Perez had Hezron, Hezron had Aram, Aram had Aminadab, Aminadab had Nashon, Nashon had Salmon, Salmon had Boaz, his mother was Rahab, Boaz had Obed, Ruth was the mother, Obed had Jesse, Jesse had David, and David became king. David had Solomon, Uriah's wife was the mother. Solomon had Rehoboam, Rehoboam had Abijah, Abijah had Asa, Asa had Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat had Joram, Joram had Uzziah, Uzziah had Jotham, Jotham had Ahaz, Ahaz had Hezekiah, Hezekiah had Manasseh, Manasseh had Amon, Amon had Josiah, Josiah had Jehoiakim and his brothers, and then the people were taken into the Babylonian exile. When the Babylonian exile ended, Jeconiah had Shealtiel. Shealtiel had Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel had Abiud, Abiud had Eliakim, Eliakim had Azor, Azor had Zadok, Zadok had Akam, Akam had Eliud, Eliud had Eleazar, Eleazar had Matan, Matan had Jacob, Jacob had Joseph, Mary's husband, the Mary who gave birth to Jesus, the Jesus who was called Christ. There were 14 generations from Abraham to David and another 14 from David to the Babylonian exile and yet another 14 from the Babylonian exile to Christ. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they enjoyed their wedding night, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph, chagrined but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in the dream, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth. And when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus. God saves because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embryonic revelation to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel, Hebrew, for God is with us. Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angel commanded in the dream. He married Mary, but he did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby. He named the baby Jesus. Matthew 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars in the city together and asked, Where's the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word, and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. 
They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child and wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under cover of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. They lived in Egypt until Herod's death. This Egyptian exile fulfilled what Hosea had preached, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod, when he realized that the scholars had tricked him, flew into a rage. He commanded the murder of every little boy two years old and under who lived in Bethlehem and its surrounding hills. He determined that age from information he'd gotten from the scholars. That's when Jeremiah's revelation was fulfilled. A sound was heard in Ramah, weeping and much lament. Rachel weeping for her children, Rachel refusing all solace, her children gone, dead and buried. Later, when Herod died, God's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Up, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those out to murder the child are dead. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother, and re-entered Israel. When he heard, though, that Archelaus had succeeded his father, Herod, as king in Judea, he was afraid to go there. But then Joseph was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. On arrival, he settled in the village of Nazareth. This move was a fulfillment of the prophetic words, He shall be called a Nazarene. Matthew 3 While Jesus was living in the Galilean hills, John, called the baptizer, was preaching in the desert country of Judea. His message was simple and austere, like his desert surroundings. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. John and his message were authorized by Isaiah's prophecy, thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival, make the road smooth and straight. John dressed in a camel hair habit, tied at the waist by a leather strap. He lived on a diet of locusts and wild field honey. People poured out of Jerusalem, Judea, and the Jordanian countryside to hear and see him in action. There at the Jordan River, those who came to confess their sins were baptized into a changed life. When John realized that a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for a baptismal experience because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded. Brood of snakes, what do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skins is going to make any difference? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and flourishing? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand, will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned. Jesus then appeared, arriving at the Jordan River from Galilee. He wanted John to baptize him. John objected, I'm the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus insisted, do it. God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is coming together right now in this baptism. So John did it. The moment Jesus came up out of the baptismal waters, the skies opened up and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing on him. And along with the spirit, a voice, this is my son, chosen and marked by my love, delight of my life. And that is Matthew chapters one through three in the message. Let's pray. God, I love that you were putting things right centuries worth of things right in Jesus's baptism. And we just believe in the power of that. We believe in the power of baptism. And so God, would you just stir us? If that's something you have for us that we haven't ever done, would you stir that in us? God, every time we see someone else get baptized, would we remember that part of what you do in baptism is make everything right? (laughs) And somehow that is true. And so we just, um, 
we thank you that you put things right. You put things right, and we thank you that we all can experience baptism, um, this experience that Jesus had. So we love you, Jesus. We're grateful. In Jesus' name, amen.